Hey! I'm Mr. O, here with another oh, yeah! moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. Welcome to our 100th episode. I've had a lot of fun doing all the great science, math, and engineering activities, but there's one I feel we need to revisit. Way back on our very first episode, I introduced you to this. This is oobleck, a very fun substance with some rather interesting properties. But before we can explore its properties, we need to make a batch. Before we begin, remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous. So always have a responsible adult helping you. We're going to make oobleck. For this you'll need a mixing bowl, measuring cups, water, food coloring, and cornstarch. First, add food coloring to one cup of water. Make sure the color is darker than you want your oobleck to be because when mixed, it will lighten up. Pour about half a cup of water into the bowl. Add two cups of cornstarch to the water. Pour the remaining water into the bowl. Now mix it. Um, there doesn't seem to be a mixing spoon. Mixing spoons won't work well because of the nature of oobleck. For this, you'll need the best mixers you have. Your hands. Great. The best way I've found to mix oobleck is to dig your hands under everything, lift and flip it over, repeating over and over again. It will start out messy, but you will eventually get a nice, even texture. Your oobleck is done when you can lift some of it up in your hand and it oozes out between your fingers like a liquid. But if you strike it with your fingers, it doesn't splash, but feels like a solid. Now, this recipe isn't foolproof. You'll likely need to tweak it a little. If your oobleck splashes, add in just a little bit more cornstarch. And if it's too dry or crumbly, make sure to add in just a little bit more water. In fact, as you play with it, you'll likely need to add in just a little bit of water because you'll lose some due to evaporation. But why does it behave like this? Ah, well to understand that, we gotta look at viscosity. Viscosity is the measure of how much a fluid resists flow, or in other words, how thick it is. Water, for example, is a fairly low viscosity, while some motor oil additives have a very high viscosity. Many fluids' viscosities tend to follow certain rules that Sir Isaac Newton described, so they're called Newtonian fluids. Other fluids, like ketchup, silly putty, and of course, oobleck, do not follow these rules, and are therefore non-Newtonian fluids. Oobleck's viscosity is determined by pressure. When you apply very little pressure, like letting it sit in your hand, its viscosity decreases so it flows. But when you apply more pressure, like hitting it, its viscosity increases so it remains solid. Because of this property, there's some interesting behaviors we can create. Let's explore this a little more. We're going to bring oobleck to life. For this, you'll need oobleck, a baking pan, a large speaker, an amplifier, and a tone generator. First, hook up the tone generator to the amplifier. You can download various apps as well as find several free tone generators online that can be run through a computer. But most handheld devices as well as computers don't generate enough sound alone, so you need an amplifier to increase the tone. Next, hook up the amplifier to the speaker. Place a baking pan over the speaker. This is to help protect the speaker from the oobleck. Now pour a small layer of oobleck onto the pan. Finally, turn it all on. I recommend starting with a tone around 50 hertz and then slowly moving up and down from there. Make sure to crank up the volume. Oh wow, check it out. It looks like it's coming to life and trying to escape. It looks that way, but it isn't alive. Remember that sound is basically patterns of vibrations through the air. Those vibrations move from the speaker and put pressure on the underside of the oobleck. So, does the pressure created by sound in some spots cause the oobleck to stiffen and become somewhat solid? Right, then, once stiff, that bit of oobleck is pushed off the surface and more fluid oobleck flows under, then stiffens as well. As this process continues, it creates the tendrils you see. And then, when the oobleck tendril gets too long, it falls and becomes more fluid again? Exactly. You can explore this more by changing around the tones and volume and seeing what happens to the oobleck. You can also have a little fun by putting in some white oobleck like we did here, then dripping in a few colors and watching what happens. This has been the hundredth oh wow moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can keep coming out to play.